Good evening, Roxana. Uh, good evening to those who are joining with us virtually as we've come together for our virtual watch night service. This is a little different than what we're so used to. Under our normal conditions, we would be fellowshipping with three other churches. The sanctuary would be full. But tonight, because of COVID-19, we're doing independent virtual services. And we're still serving the Lord. I thank God just for being here tonight. I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. As we bring this year to a close and as you're sitting there, I want you to think about all you've had to endure this year. The ups, the downs, those crazy turnarounds, those incomplete moments, those, those things that failed to meet your needs, but yet God somehow made a way. I want you to think about people that came in your life and let you down, but God is still a keeper. The word of God says he'll stick closer than a brother. I want you to think about maybe the loved ones or friends that you've lost in this year, but God is still blessing. I want you to think about how good God has been to you all by yourself. Not what he's done for your neighbor, but what he's done for you, just you alone. I want you to think about when, when trouble rose in your life because you're saved, you still have a savior. And your savior showed up. And I want you to reminisce on the fact that God's track record is flawless. He has no losses in the lost column. So as, as we go forward in this moment tonight, under different circumstances, you never know this may become the new normal. But you ought to still have a praise in your heart which will allow you to praise God tonight. Closing of a year and you've made it thus far, and in a few hours it'll all be over, and we'll be embracing a new year. I thank God for my Roxana Church family. I thank God for your prayers. I thank God for your texts, for your calls, for your messages on Messenger. I thank, thank God for you reaching out to me in my illness. For a few weeks, things looked dark, but the Lord showed up, and I'm still standing tonight. And as I look around, I'm, I'm looking at those that are here with me. They've been touched by COVID-19 in some shape form or fashion so we don't we don't need a lot of folk here tonight to help us praise God in this worship service there's still a noise in Roxana tonight because we are overcomers we are more than conquerors when the enemy shot his best shot his best shot didn't take us down and and we're still standing tonight that's worth the praise all by itself so I'm thankful tonight. And all those that are viewing this virtual service as you're watching, count your many blessings for what the Lord has done for you. And I don't care what you may be thinking in your life right now. You may not have everything you want. Bills may not be paid, but I know one that's, that can pay the bills. 
I know the one that'll give you the desires of your heart if you just line up with him. And if your 2020 was anything like mine, it's been a rough year. And I'm glad to see her on her way. And somebody just said it, and I heard you online. I heard you saying online, Pastor, what you had to worry about? Well, maybe my bills were paid. Maybe my family was all right. But, but I had moments in my own life when I didn't know how it was going to work out for me. So I had to figure out that I just trust God in every circumstance. And, and God was going to come through and work it out on my behalf. So I want you to reflect tonight on what God has done for you. Count it all joy. Even if you're in a dark moment right now, I want you to know that God is getting you ready to bring you into a marvelous light. Count it all joy. If trouble is on the home front, count it all joy. God is working it out right now in your life. So as we go forward tonight, don't hold back your praise at home because it's a virtual moment. If you're in your house, you ought to be able to tell the Lord thank you. You ought to be able to wave a hand. You ought to be able to stand up and just look toward heaven and let the Lord know that you're, you're thankful for what you do have. For the little house or maybe the big house, it doesn't matter. Whatever he's giving you shelter in a time of storm, you, you ought to praise him wherever you are tonight. There ought to be a praise in your heart. For we serve an awesome God, an almighty God. He's a counselor. He's the prince of peace. He's my bridge over troubled waters. And I thank him tonight. And no matter what, what, what's going on, God has an answer for you. If you just turn it all over to him. I'm so glad that you joined us for this virtual New Year's Watch Night service. We're going to let God have his way here tonight. And I promise you, if, if you go with God, your blessings are on the way. So as we go forward tonight, I'm going to ask Minister Womack to come, and she's going to take a few moments and give us her reflections on this past year to bless us. Because you need to know you're not the only one that had to go through this. We all went through it together. And after she's done, our praise team is going to render two selections to us. And then I'm coming back and I'm going to give us the word for tonight. hearing good news. People were talking about what their new year was going to be like. How they were going to move forward in, in God. How they had been given a new opportunity to get it right with God. So I knew 
things were going to be okay. But then, Pastor, the month of March came around. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The month of March became a month of rumors. Rumors of a virus, Lord God. Rumors of a virus. But I didn't take notice, Pastor Davis. Virtual world, I didn't take notice because we hear of all kind of things all year long. And as long as don't touch you, ah, Jesus, you are okay. And they said it was a virus called COVID-19. But we all went along as we normally do. I know I did. I can't speak for nobody but myself. I went on with my regular cycle of coming to Bible study, coming to church on Sunday, worshiping God, getting closer to God, carrying my word that I receive on Sunday mornings from the pastor, the nuggets that I receive from Pastor Davis and his teaching out to other people, sharing the word of God, hoping that somebody else could get something out of what I had learned. And then I heard about the virus had attacked Tom Hanks, Edris Elba. That's the first time it got my attention. See, I know God wanted us to be on God and be ready. But he has to go in every direction to get some people's attention. When I heard about Tom Hanks and his wife, I started paying attention. And then when it said Idris Elba, I, become, I began to watch more and more. Still going on with my life like I normally do, but it got my attention a little more. And then the summer came, God. The summer came and then the virus went to a pandemic. And I was hearing of people that was closed by getting this virus. And I began to say, I know her. I know him. Oh God. I began to pray more. I've been getting to call on the name of Jesus more. Asking God to heal these people. Still it had not touched my home. Yeah. Glory to God. I know God is a healer. And I know he's a protector. The summer began to be a rough month. Those months began to roll on. And I look back over my life now, Pastor. Back over that this year. There was a need to shut the state down. For safety for the people. Because it began to spread everywhere. They began to shut down the schools. Now it's getting closer. I could feel it getting closer. So those who know me, especially in the ministry, they said she carried that bag with her all the time. In that bag, I kept Lysol, gloves, all kind of cleansers. I would come to church on Sunday. Spray the pulpit, spray the choir, stand, have my shield and my mask on, spraying lights all everywhere. Because I heard on the news that they said if you wear a mask, you keep your hands washed, you deal with take the lights all and spray it everywhere, it kills germs. Pastor, I was faithful to that all during the year just faithful as I thought I could be. 
But I work in a school system, dealing with children all day long. And I think, Pastor Davis, I became complacent. I became lack a days ago, and I began to deal with my children. And I remember as it happened yesterday, the day that I took my mask off. And I began to sit in the room and talk with the children. Some of them had already been sick. And there was a little boy, well, a teenager in my class. And he said, Miss Womack, I'm still, I still have it. But my mom said, I'm not sick, I'm just a carrier. So I could come to school. Looking back over my life now, how I've grown from being lack, becoming protective, and now in the place of lack again. I left, I remember the day I left school. And I went home, and the next day I felt a little funny, the next day I felt a little funny. But by the six, my husband came home that Saturday morning from work. And I said, babe, I don't feel good. He said, I don't either. Still knowing who my God is, I'm thinking I have a cold or I've caught the flu. <laughs> Thank you, God. Even in the midst of this, thank you, God. Because I know you can work it out for me. I saw Tom Hanks get better. <laughs> I saw Aegis Elba get better. I saw children in the school get better. And then the doctor told me, he said, uh, you have autoimmune deficiency disease. You don't need to go back over in that school. But by this time I gone, my husband and I have gone and been tested and we both positive. And because, because of the illness that I've already had, the COVID attacked my organs. Everything that I had been spending the whole year from January up until November trying to build my body up to get ready. <laughs> what a God we serve. I began to get sicker and sicker and sicker. And I actually thought I was going to leave this world. Because that's the kind of torture. <laughs> that I had to go through. My husband was just as sick. But I'm still seeing good things occurring around me. <laughs> How God is blessing people. How God is taking care of his people. And I want to share with you, and I'm going to get ready to close. Even in the storm that I was going through, my husband and I, I had to call on my pastor sometimes for encouragement. And he was going through the same thing. And even though I knew my pastor and where he was, see, I can, I can feel him. I feel him. He kept the strength and the faith for me. He prayed for me. He encouraged me and my husband. One morning I knew that it was the end for me, Pastor. I was ready to get up, give up. I was tired. And I started reflecting back <laughs> how my year began. And I remember who started that year with me. And I just began to cry out to God. Asking him, and I wasn't selfish, Roxana, in virtual world. I didn't just pray for me and my husband. I prayed for everybody that this thing had attacked and people were dying. 
that I know and love. And God was healing people in the midst of all of this stuff. And I thank him because he didn't forget about me. He didn't forget about my husband. He didn't forget about my sister who had it. He didn't forget about my pastor who had it. He didn't forget it about my other sisters who had it. He brought us through at the same time. Glory to God, hallelujah. When I look back over my life right now, and I think about the goodness of Jesus, and all that he's done for me, I've been through many storms, but I don't forget who brought me through. And church tonight, I need you to understand that I know a lot of people just can't wait for this year to go on by this business. We've been through so much this year. We wanted to just go on. Just go on, 20. Go on about your business, 2020. Because I believe in my spirit that God is going to do some things in 21. But the word told me In Chronicles 7, verse 14. And I'm going to leave you alone. Because God is good. And he's good all the time. I don't care what we go through. God is still good. And we have to keep our focus on him. And even though I came out of this virus with some issues, I believe God. And he's worthy to be praised. Oh, yeah, Reverend Davis, you helped me with the sermon, son. He told me that in 2,000 years, God been preparing a way for us, a place for us. But we're still trying to stay in this place here. We need to be getting ready to see God. And that thing helped to take some fear away from me, Pastor. I'm not afraid to say it, because I'm human. I'm a minister, but I'm human also. That helped me to move to another place. So when I reflect back to where I started, to what I had to go through, and to where I am right now, I thank God for allowing me to see this day this day that the Lord has made. And I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. The new year to come. He says in his word, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, this is the key to the world. This is his word to the world. Some directions, instructions. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. We have instructions, church. If you take some time and reflect on your life, thank you, Jesus. For doing what you did through me and my husband and my church family. Thank you, God, for you allowing the world to see, the virtual world, to see that we went through, but we made it to the other side. A lot of people didn't make it, Pastor Davis. So I believe in my heart from January to December, there's still work for us to do. So I got my ears open, my eyes open, and I'm waiting to hear from God. I thank you, God, for all you've done for me, for my family and for my church family. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God.
among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Shall help me sing? Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise. Let the praise, let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let's sing, oh, oh. the glory of the Lord, let, let the, the glory, glory of the Lord, the Lord. let it rise, rise among let us. the glory, let the glory of the Lord, let it rise, rise among let us. the praise, let the praise of our King rise among us, let it rise, let your song of the Lord rise, let the songs of the Lord, let it rise in our hearts, rise among us, let your song let the rise, songs of the
your glory, God. Use us for your glory, God.
for winning the victory. I thank the Lord for winning the victory just for me. What an awesome God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. And as we go forward tonight, I ask you to reflect on your year. I believe for somebody else other than me, the Lord has won the victory. Yeah, if, if you are honest tonight, whether you've been sick or not, he's won the victory for you. His death was not in vain because there was a resurrection. And as Minister Womack alluded to on Sunday, I told you that he was there when the world was created in six days, everything and in it. And surely if he's spending over 2,000 years to prepare a place for us, then it's going to be a marvelous place for us to see. There's no place better than heaven. I thank God for you tonight, and there is a word from the Lord, and if you're viewing virtually, my Roxana Church family, uh, those that have been partnering with us virtually, I want to take a minute as, as God is putting me where I need to be to just say thank you for this year. This coming Sunday, I will celebrate the completion of nine years as your pastor here at Big Rock Center Missionary Baptist Church, and I thank God for letting me give you nine years of service. More than anything, I hope that it's been pleasing in his sight. So as we prepare to hear from the Lord tonight, this word that's coming forth, let's go before the Lord in prayer. May we pray. Father God, we thank you for the right now. Lord, we, we don't know what tomorrow's going to hold, but you hold tomorrow in your hands. We don't know what awaits us in 2021, but Lord, you already know. Father God, there's been some hills to climb some valleys to go through. We've had some good days and bad days, but we just pause to say thank you for the right now. Lord God, no matter how things may seem, we know that you have power over all things. Now, Father, as your man servant, I command the blessing over my church family and over those who are viewing virtually with us tonight. I command the blessing in their lives for the year to come in 2021. I speak prosperity to them tonight. That, Lord, if they've been faithful, Lord, if they've been faithful, then whatever they put their hands to, let it be profitable. In Jesus' name. That, Lord, you become their everything. They are all in all. That, Lord, you'll order their steps, their way ins, and their way outs. That, Father God, you will put a hedge around them and keep them safe. That, Lord God, no matter what hurdles may come their way, you will give them whatever they need to clear those hurdles. Now, Father, bless this word tonight. Lord, I penned it, but you hallow it. And let it be a seed planted in good soil for the furtherance of your kingdom. Speak, Lord, in this hour. As I decrease, you increase. 
take control right now for this feeble body. Use me as an instrument of your bidding that some man, woman, girl, or boy may hear the word of God and as we come into the new year, they'll have a desire to be saved. Speak, Lord, like only you can in this hour. Speak to our hearts like only you can. Just have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. And for his sake, amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord tonight. And I'm going to lift three passages of scripture. You don't have to try to turn with me. If you write them down, you can look at them later. Um, to these scriptures hopefully will edify us as we consider the message tonight. The first passage comes from John 3 and 3, and it reads, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The next passage comes from Romans 6, the fourth verse, and it says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That is like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. And the final passage comes from Philippians 3, 13 and 14. And it says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Just, just for a few moments, I, I want to deal with this subject, a prescription for the new year, a prescription for the new year. You see, so many have set out, sent out countless greeting cards through the mail and email and text messages, and they've sent out salutations all through Thanksgiving and Christmas and even for the new year. Amen. Celebrations will occur tonight even though we're in the midst of a pandemic. Some people are going to celebrate tonight. Don't, don't think that I'm foolish. I know that there are going to be some folks gathering in homes in mass numbers because they can't get in the clubs tonight, but they're still going to celebrate the coming in of a new year. But let me say this, the new year is not really new. I'm going to say it again. The new year is not really new. See, while thousands will shout, Happy New Year, they will awaken in the morning to the same old burdens as they had before. They'll wake to the same old bills. They'll wake to the same old problems. And instead of a happy new year, for many, it will be a terrible hangover. Yeah. See, there's, there's no magic hour at midnight that suddenly ushers away all your problems and ushers in ecstatic joy. Twelve o'clock won't be the witching hour when everything that's wrong in your life will be changed and made beautiful and in such a fashion that you can enjoy the entire year. So I say this and I ask this question. I wonder if you know what it takes to make a new year happy. I wonder if you know what it takes to make a new year happy. The first thing is the new birth. It takes the new birth to make a new year happy. The necessity 
of a new birth. Many have dreamed of opportunities of starting over again. In John 3 and 3 through 5, we read about Nicodemus and his question about how can a man be born again? How can a man enter the mother's womb a second time? But Jesus affirms that the only way to the Father is through him, and you have to be born again. This year coming up, 2021, many folk are looking for a start over. They're looking for the opportunity to right some wrongs. They're looking for an opportunity to fix some broken things in their life. But I stopped by to tell somebody tonight on the verge of a new year that if you want a new start, you need new birth. And the only way you're going to get new birth is to come to Jesus Christ. The new birth is, is not baptism, and it's not the Reformation. The new birth takes place upon receiving Christ by faith. It's by faith. You've got to get to the place where you come out of you and you walk into him, where you believe that he lived, died, and rose again, that you might be saved. It's when you decide that he becomes the priority in your life rather than the things that you are working so hard for, rather than the children that sit around you, rather than the things that you purchase and have. You've got to decide to make him the priority. Yeah, the first thing to making that new year happy is the new birth. The second thing is, if you can get the new birth, you surely got to get the new walk. Yeah, it, it takes the new walk. There's no one more miserable than a believer who doesn't live right. There are some miserable folk in the world. There are some miserable folk in the body of Christ. There are some miserable folk in the church because they're not walking right. They're not living right. And, and, and it's hard for you to have joy. It's going to be hard for you to have a happy new year when you're miserable because you're a believer, but you're not living right. Yeah, you, you want God to alter his plan, and you want Christ to accept your sinful life so that you can say, happy new year. Yeah, there's no one more miserable than a believer who doesn't live right. See, and it's not that you're living right before me. It's not right uh, that you're living right before other believers. It's the fact that you got to live right before God. Because the things that you think I don't see, God sees all of it. He doesn't miss any of it. And, and, and that's the problem. Too many have convinced themselves that if it's done in the dark, it's not going to show up in the light. But too many have convinced themselves that God will put up with their tolerable mess and then give them a blessing, that's not the way God works. Yeah, there are some miserable believers in the body of Christ and in the church because they are not living right. There should be a difference between the old walk and the new walk. Yeah, there should be a difference between the old walk and the new walk. There should be a difference because the old walk was in the flesh and, and the new walk should be in the spirit. There should be a difference because the walk before and the walk after, it takes a conversion process to make this happen. There is a difference, just like there's day and night. If you've been in the night, folk ought to recognize when you start walking in the daytime. Yeah, there should be a difference between your old walk and the new walk. But the problem comes even in the body of Christ is when your old walk looks just like your new walk. When, when you walk in the same way you walked before you say you were saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. When, when your language hadn't changed, you're still cursing folk out. You still want to lay hands on some people and, 
you're still walking around angry, holding grudges because that was your old walk. And when, when, when you walk around and you want to get back at folk for what they've done to you, that's your old walk. And, and some folks say, I lay my religion down. Well, that's part of the problem. You got religion. You need Jesus in your life. And if you get Jesus, you'll get a new walk. And in your new walk, you'll learn how to pray for those who despitefully use you. You'll learn how to turn the other cheek. You'll learn how not to get upset with folk who you know ain't got common sense. You'll, you'll, you'll get to a place where you can survive the storms that they create because you have the storm maker on your side. Yeah, a new walk. Yeah, to, to practice the new walk, you've got to feed the new man. You've got to give him the true word of God. You've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit and you've got to quench the new man's thirst for a living God. And you can't quench his thirst if you're never in the place where the word of God is coming forth. I, 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 get it. I, I, I just get beside myself when, when I run into folk who say they are done with the church, but they got God in their life. Well, I, I, I'm scared of folk who don't ever dock in the doors of worship and, and then say that they got it all together. Because the problem is the Bible says how else can they heal? without a preacher. So every now and then, you, you, you need to, if you fell out with the church in 2021, you need to find a word-based church. You need to get away from the pimps and the prostitutes in the gospel and get in a church that's preaching God's word. There's still a need to know that hell is real, not just prosperity. You need to know that there's a place of fire and brimstone, and the only way to avoid it is to accept this man named Jesus Christ. I know I'm going to rub some the wrong way today, but I, I need you to understand you got to feed the new man if he has a new walk. You got to give him a word from God that's filling. You don't need to feed him M&Ms and cotton candy. You don't need to give him snicker bars and Mr good boss. You don't need to get up and wave a towel in front of him and holler all the time. You need to teach him how to walk in the new walk. Yeah. You got to quench the thirst of the new man for a living God. Yeah. Not only, see, to put happy into your new year, you've got to have a new walk. But there's one last thing that you need. You need the new goal. Yeah, you need the new goal. New birth and a new walk going after the same old goals won't work. Yeah, if, if, if you got the new birth and you've got the new walk, you need new goals. You got to have a new goal that won't ever fade or tarnish or grow old. You've got to put your past goals behind you. You've got to put your past sins and failures behind you. You've got to put even your past victories behind you. You've got to forget all those things that may hinder you in your life for Christ. You got to embrace the priorities that God has placed in your life. See, the problem is some folk are going to go into 2021 carrying old goals. They're going to carry old problems over into this new year. They're going to carry some of their failures into the new year. They're going to carry some folks who caused them to fail into the new year. But I stopped by to tell somebody tonight, you need new goals. You need new objectives. And the only person that can give them to you is God. And when, when God speaks in your life and gives you a new objective or a new goal, you got to be obedient to his instruction to obtain the promise. There's never been a time in God's word where God denied the promise from anybody that was obedient. When Israel was lost out there in the wilderness is one of the greatest examples of instruction and promise. Here it is, Moses goes before God and God tells Moses on the first encounter, Moses, I know that the people are thirsty. I've heard their cry. 
take your rod and hit the rock twice, and the rock is going to produce water. And Moses followed God's instruction. And when he went out there, he struck the rock twice, and the water came forth, and the thirst of the people were quenched. And later on, it tells us that God was again, Moses was again before God. And this time, he's heard the cry of the people for their thirst again. And, and God tells Moses, this time when you go out, I want you to speak to the rock, Moses. I, I don't want you to put the rod against it. I want you to speak to it, if I can paraphrase this evening. And, and Moses goes out to meet the need of the people, but in his frustration, he didn't follow the instructions of God. Instead of speaking to the rock and letting the rock produce the water so God could get the glory Moses strikes the rock again and the water comes forth, but God is denied the glory. And because he was not faithful to the instructions of God, Moses didn't get to go into the promised land. It, it didn't matter how long he had been out there walking in the wilderness with these Negroes who didn't want to follow direction. It, it didn't matter how long he had been out there wandering with them. It didn't matter how many prayers he had spoken for them. But the one time that he failed to be obedient and follow God instructions was enough to keep him out of the promise. I'm telling you you got to have new goals going into a new year. You got to seek God for what God would have you to do. And when God gives you the new goals and objectives, you got to be willing to follow his instructions to the letter. Because the first time that you get off key with God, it's going to cost you the promise. Somebody didn't want to hear that tonight. And that's why so many are going to struggle in trying to get it in 2021. I know, young folk, I hear you out there. Those that are watching virtually, I hear you talking about you're going to get your bags together. You're going to stack it all up. But a stack ain't nothing but a stack if God ain't in it. And anything that you put up, can, can it'll rot away. It'll, it'll get away from you if you're not careful. It's like putting water in a bucket with a hole in it. It'll soon disappear. You need God in your life. Yeah. The enemy got too many of your food in this year and in this season he's got too many of your food that you can do it on your own terms and do it your way and it's going to be profitable but, but I stopped by to tell somebody tonight the only way you're going to prosper is you got to do it God's way yeah coming into 2021 yeah the prescription for a happy new year it takes the new birth. Beyond the new birth, you've got to go a step further. It takes a new walk. And none of those are good if you don't have new goals. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm finna close it because I'm done tonight. If you didn't get something out of that, you won't get it. But I, I want to tell somebody tonight, leave your problems in the past. Can, can, I, can I really get down on that level where folk can really understand me? We're about to go into a new year in just a few hours. Some of you need to pack light. Some of you need to go back to your luggage and take some of that stuff out that you're trying to carry into this new year. You need to unload some folk out of your life. You need to unload some family members out of your life. You need to unload some children that are disobedient out of your life and they grown folks still in your house. You need to unload them going into 21. You need to be packing light for 2021 because God is going to be on the move and while you trying to drag all that stuff from 2020 behind you. God gonna be moving on in the year and you gonna get left behind. I know you didn't want to hear that but you needed to hear it. Yeah, you needed to hear it because what God is finna do in this season we got to be able to move and shift with him. We're going to have to have our priorities set on him. You don't need nothing in your life that's more important than God. I ain't got a problem with it. But God ought to be the most important thing 
in your life going into 2021. If he brought you through 2020 and the COVID now is getting worse, there's a new strand on the horizon and you still around here playing with the old strand and the enemy done sent something new and stronger, you, you might not make it in 2021. You still playing around out there doing it your way. You better wake up and take notice that you're going to need God on your side in 2021. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to take a change of heart. It's going to take a change of mind to move in this new year, to move with God. You're going to have to embrace the priorities that God has placed in your life. Some going to miss the flow. They're going to miss it because they are still going to be stuck in 2020 trying to do it their way. But God has set a new pattern. He's did, hit the reset button, and now beyond the reset button, when we come into this year, there's going to be a time of refreshing and prosperity, but you can't share in that if you're not on God's page. I heard somebody, you're online, I heard you say, well, God is on my page. That's the problem in your life. God is on your page. You need to get on God's page because your page is all messed up. That's why you're going through some of the stuff you're going through because you wrote what's on the page. You hadn't looked at his page. Yeah. Yeah, you need to walk away from that stuff that you've developed because it's not working for you. But you need to take a minute and re-examine the scripture and see what God is calling you to do. Then, before I take my seat out, I just want to say in closing, if you're willing to implement the truth in your life, and you, you're willing to face the results, if you're willing to implement the truth in your life and you're willing to face the results, you can win in 2021. But I need you to know tonight that if you're not going to implement the truth, then there are some results that you're going to have to face. The first thing you need to know, if there's new, no new birth, your soul is lost. Second thing you need to know, if there's no new walk, your testimony is lost. The third thing that you need to know, if there are no new goals, God's rewards are lost. But if you're willing to implement the truth in your life, then the results that you will receive come as follows. You'll have salvation. And when God saves you, he gives you separation. And out of your separation, he'll help you develop dedication. Because when God saves you, truly saves you, I'm not talking about some folk who play in church. I'm talking to the folk who are doing it for real. I'm talking to the folks who are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, walking upright in righteousness and doing it God's way. When salvation hits your life, it separates you from the things that are not of God. See, you can't say you got God in your life and you playing with the devil too. The playground ain't big enough. I, I need to stop by and let somebody know that whoever you riding on the seesaw with is the person that you going to serve. Whoever you on the merry-go-round with, that's who you going to serve. Whoever you sliding down the sliding board behind, that's who you going to serve. But when you serve in God, salvation will bring about separation when you're separated from the world and you're with God then God will cause you to become dedicated unto him yeah you should want to experience the joy of living in the center of God's will I want that for somebody in 2021 this year I want somebody to experience the joy of living in the center of God's will. Guess what? Oh, I'm done. Guess what? When, when you're in the center of God's will, there's peace in the center of God's will. I want you to know when you're living in the center of God's will, 
there's protection in God's will. When, when you're living in the center of God's will, there's prosperity in God's will. Somebody needs to know that tonight, that everything you need is in the center of God's will. But for you to have a happy new year, you need to take this prescription and get it filled. And the only person that has the pharmaceutical rights to fill this prescription, his name is Jesus Christ. And if you allow Jesus to enter into your heart, he'll fill this prescription. He'll make everything all right. If you allow Jesus to come into your heart, he'll sit you down at the center of God's will. And God's will is where I want to be in a year like 2021. When it looks like storms are on the horizon, strong winds start to blow. I want to be in the center of God's will. Because in the center of God's will, he'll rock you to sleep in the cradle of his arms. In the center of God's will, he'll keep you all through the storm. In the center of God's will, he'll help you to rise above your problems. In the center of God's will, he'll make a way out of no way. In the center of God's will, there's joy and peace. In the center of God's will, there are some traveling twins, grace and mercy. They're in the center of God's will. And I don't believe that anybody watching this evening is beyond a place where you don't need grace and mercy. Grace can cover you, but mercy is going to deliver you. I wish I had one or two witnesses in here tonight that know that God's will it's where you want to be, in the center of God's will. That's how you're going to make your new year a happy new year. The prescription for a happy new year. It's a new birth, a new walk, and a new goal come out of the mess you in. I want to speak to somebody tonight. Let go of some of your old habits. Yeah, some of you, I just heard you saying I don't have no habits. I just got some stuff I like to do. Well, that stuff you like to do is what's keeping you out of God's place of promise. So some stuff you need to let go and walk in the newness of life. I challenge you tonight, before the clock strikes midnight, that you'll fall down on your knees and tell the Lord you're godly sorry, that you'll repent of your sins and turn and walk in a different direction. You will take the advantage away from Satan tonight as we prepare to go into this new year. Open up your cell phone. Go to your contacts. And scroll down and on some folk, hit delete. Because you don't need to carry them into the new year with you. Yeah, you need to stop following them on Instagram and Facebook. Because they're not going where you're going if you're walking right with God. God has a promise for you in the year. You just got to be obedient to his instructions. And I know that some of you out of there want to take your enemies and those that who've been coming against you with you into the promise. So you can wash it in their face and wave it in their face. But that ain't the way God works. When the promise becomes yours, they'll know about it. Word to get around that God has blessed you. 
They'll find out because it'll hit the telephone and they'll be talking about it. But I stop by to tell you tonight that there's a blessing in 2021 for you if you just walk right with the Lord. Take the prescription for a happy new year. Allow the Lord to fill it. And once it's filled, you use it. See, a prescription is no good if you don't use it. If it's filled at the pharmacy and you just put it in your medicine cabinet, it's no good. You got to take your medicine. So I'm saying to some of you tonight, take your medicine, get down on your knees, tell the Lord that you repent of your sins and the error of your ways, that you want to come into this new year, you want him to purge you and, and clean you up and make you white as snow. And I promise you, if you do that, the Lord will fix you. He'll come into your life. He'll forgive you. And he'll let you start afresh with him. He'll order your steps. And you know you can't go wrong when the Lord is ordering your steps. This is your hour. As we embrace the new year of 2021 that's coming our way. I thank God for each one of you tonight. Our praise team is going to run the selection. And I'm coming back and I'm going to give us the benediction. And if you're watching tonight, don't leave the broadcast yet. Because your blessing is in the benediction. And too many of you have been leaving church without getting your blessing because you leave before the benediction. And I know we're in a virtual platform and you got to get your shower, you got to put on your clothes, but if you can give me a few minutes to speak over your life, it might carry you through 2021. So the praise team is coming and they're going to lift the song and I'll come back and I'm going to speak the blessing to close out 2020 and to take you into 2021. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken. Help me say, this is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Somebody say, this is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your Open it holy up. presence, oh God. Your holy presence. Say, living in me. Living. In me, say this is my daily bread. Your word is mine. This my is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Say I am, and 
This is my daily bread. This, this is, is my daily, daily bread. bread. Your oh, word is our daily bread. Yeah. This, this is, is my daily, daily bread. bread. Your very word spoken to me. of him.
you God we're desperate for you God we're desperate for you God for you only God for Lord if you show up all of our needs will be met Lord if if, if, if you show up, all of our problems will be solved. We're so desperate for you, God. Mm. It's amazing how surreal this moment is. Just how real this moment is. We're, we're closing out now. We're there. We're coming down to the end of the year. In just a few hours. Mm. And by calendar, it's all said and done. But I thank you, God. I thank you, God, because you saw us through it. I, I thank you, God, because you, you brought us to this place at this time. Now, Lord, as I begin to reason about what I would bring before you tonight in this closing prayer and benediction, I thank God tonight for the angelic voices of praise, those that are here tonight who were faithful tonight. I thank God for you letting the Lord lead you and order your footsteps. And I know some are working, and I know some people couldn't get off. But the enemy needed to know that worship wouldn't be hindered, that we were going to worship you anyhow, God. I thank God for 
Minister Michael Moore, I thank God for my friend who took time out of his busy schedule and within less than a few hours, he, he heard that I needed his help and I called and we had conversation and he's here tonight. I thank God for him for being a friend of Rock Santa, a son of Rock Santa, amen. I consider him my son, amen. It's just wonderful. Thank God for and Darius Porter tonight. I thank God for him tonight in 2021. He's the only young man I know that's attending college on a virtual network and God has promoted him in his job and he's getting a good salary now, amen. And that's just the beginning of what God is gonna do. And I'm not going to tell you what he's making, but and Darius, if, if you stay faithful, whatever you're making right now in your new position, God is going to multiply that by 10, I'm telling you. If you just stay faithful, yeah, he'll multiply it by 10, 100 fold. Don't worry about the little stuff, and Darius. God got that. And to you who are looking virtually in my Rock Sounder Church family, if you're in your struggle right now, don't turn your back on God. Don't turn your back on God. Stay faithful. Keep your eyes on him in this hour. For the Lord is still working it out. And Father God, I, I want to lift up my daughter tonight to you all my children, but especially my daughter. She's in a transition season. And Lord, she said she heard from you. And you told her to stay the course. And everything was going to be all right. And I believe it, God, because you've never failed her yet. And whatever she's had need of, you've always provided and Lord, now she's in a place where I can't step in and do what needs to be done. But you've told her, just stay the course. So I'm holding you accountable, God, by saying you said it in your word that you supply all our needs. So, Father God, I, I know that 2021 is going to be an awesome year for my Rock Santa Church family. For those who are connected to us, God, you're going to do some awesome things in this year to come. We just have to be faithful. So now as we get ready to go, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, I thank you tonight for making this way possible, Lord God. I thank you for this opportunity for a New Year's Eve virtual worship service, God. Allow the word, a prescription for a happy new year to t be a seed planted in good soil in the hearts of your children. Now, Lord, bless every family that's watching us virtually. Lord, God, put a hedge of protection around them. Lord, dispatch angels to take up residence in their homes, that they might ward off evil spirits, to keep them in perfect peace in all of 2021. Now, Lord, whatever they put their hands to, Lord, let it be profitable for the kingdom of God. Let the world see that, Lord, that serving you pays off even right now. Lord, search each one of us. Search us, Lord. Give us a clean heart that we might have a desire to serve you. And then, Lord, fix whatever's broken in our lives. Fix us, Lord Jesus. So many times we've tried to fix ourselves, but 
the results are always the same. For man will fall. But Lord, you fix us. Whatever's broken in our life, you fix it right now in the name of Jesus. To those who partnered with us on this virtual network, Lord, bless them as well. Keep them, Lord God. Speak a word in their lives that they'll realize that they can't face 2021 without your son, Jesus Christ. Do an effectual work, Lord God. Bring them closer. Draw them nearer to a flame that never goes out. Now, God, continue to have your way in the body of Christ. Hold us accountable, God for what we put forth in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord God. Have your way. Bless our year, day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, month by month. Bless it, Lord God. And we'll be careful to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. For you alone are worthy. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. And all of God's children said amen, amen, amen. 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 I thank God for each one of you tonight on this virtual platform, my Rock Santa Church family, to those who tuned in virtually, shared with someone else, put it out there. We want people to get a real word from the Lord and to move forward into the new year being blessed. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning, the first Sunday in a new year with a word from the Lord. We'll be here at 1030 to worship the Lord, and I want you to be a part of the worship process. May God bless you and keep you tonight. If you're moving about, be safe. Be safe out there. And I'm going to ask the Lord to cover you and keep you until we meet again. God bless you. Pastor loves you, and I look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning. Have a great evening.